heat and the cold, but not this heat. I am not going to hell because there is no relief from the seat and I, I don't want to see my bill when it comes. I don't want to see my bill. My sister said she almost passed out when she got her electric bill because the AC, they're running so hard. A lot of them kicking out because they have to be working so hard. But God is good. And it is of the Lord mercy that we're not consuming. Amen. But I'm so grateful for being alive and to be in the land of the living. Today, just want to welcome everyone, Facebook, YouTube, Zoom, Call Out Gospel Radio. Very happy to have you all with us today. Amen. I see Evangelist Fagan on the line uh, in the room, so I'll give her a chance. She can jump in and make her a co-host so she can jump in um, anytime she wants to, because this goes along with some of what she was teaching and some of what Pastor Raphael was also teaching about the mind. We started this on Monday, how to be happy. And happiness is a state of mind. It is definitely a state of mind. And Monday I went to the park doing my exercise and I saw these two people that were sleeping on the bench and the woman got up and she went to the Dairy Queen and she came back with three containers of half of what do you call it now half drunk or half eaten at a milkshake or Sunday, but there was enough left in it. And she went in the garbage bin and she came back with three different containers. So she had something to eat for that morning. Now she was happy because she got food. I was looking at her and said, oh my God, I have to go and make some food for them. But by the time I went back, uh, I'm about just before noon looking for them. I could not find them anywhere, but she was happy that she had something to eat. You may be quarreling and miserable because I had eggs, but I didn't have any bacon or I had my pancakes and there was not enough syrup because the pancake syrup was finished and da 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 And I wanted butter to plaster on it and I didn't have enough butter to plaster on it. It is happenings that determine whether you're happy or sad, but it is your mindset that is the driving force behind it. And if we can change our mindset, life will be very, very happy for us because you choose your reaction. Life, they say, is 90% of what happened to you and 10% of how you react to it. You can choose not to react. If somebody says something to you, you don't have to fly off the handle and you don't have to give them your, a piece of your mind. I need all my mind. I need all of it. I can't afford to give anybody any. You don't have to um, quarrel and, 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 and be fussing and doing all these things. All of that is in your control. The things that are out of your control, fine. But what is in your control, you can control it. And it all has to do with your mindset, it is with the mind we serve God. I remember when I left Jamaica and I went to St. Vincent and it was a different, uh, it was a different setting. It was a different setting. I went to St. Vincent and um, after I left the people who um, I was staying with, I wanted to be closer to the town. UPC had a church that was closed and I was trying to open up that church. That church was in the town. And for six months, I live with the Carib Indians. I lived with the Carib Indians for six months. When I lived with the Carib Indians, they did not have electricity. Electricity was to like three quarters of the island. And because they're in the mountain area above, beyond the river, sometimes when there is flooding, you cannot cross because there is a part of the road that there is no bridge, there is no nothing. When it's, uh, when the water, when it's not raining or overflowing the banks, you just kind of drive through the waters and go over the other side. But when it's overflow the bank, you on this side, stay over here, and you're on that side, you stay over there until the water recede. I lived six months with the Carib Indians. The six months I lived there, I learned how to make coconut oil. I learned how to make um, lime juice, real lime juice. I learned, I see how they cure fish. 
I went with them to the fields and plant tomatoes. I, I saw ganja up, up close and personal. I know the name and I'm from Jamaica, but I've never seen ganja before until they took me to the field and show and see ganja and tomato um, growing together. I learned a lot of things there, but with, with being with the Carib, um, being with the Carib Indians, if I was happy or sad, it depends on my state of mind. If I was saying, well, I'm not used to this, da 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 da, -da. I, I could make myself very miserable, but I just go with the flow. And when I left them and went to the, to the town and I was not working and I have no source of income, I, I eat what I, what I could. When I didn't have any food to eat, I was fasting. I was like 128 pounds and it never bothered to me. I could not keep any weight. If I have food to eat, I eat. If I have no food, I just fast. So when I left Jamaica, I do not eat breadfruit. I eat roast breadfruit, but not boiled breadfruit. I was happy when I get boiled breadfruit. I did not eat okra. You should see me planting and harvesting okra that I did not eat that slimy thing. I eat eggplant. I've seen eggplant in Jamaica. Never know what this thing is, but I learned balanji and melange. I plant and eat my balanji and melange. And, and, and I, um, I eat dashing leaf and call it kalalu. I eat sweet potato leaf and call it kalalu because that was their kalalu. And I remember first when I went there and, 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 and I went to the market and I was looking for kalalu. And when they offer me a, a bag, I said, uh-uh, I said, that's dashing leaf. And in Jamaica, we give that to pigs. That is, that is pig food and I don't eat pig food. Couple months later, I was very glad to get the pig food. All right, I was very glad for the pig food. But, but if I wanted to make myself miserable, I could. But I just adapt to the situation. When there was no meat, I get my mango and I stew my mango and I cook the mango as meat. I was healthy. I was fit. There was no such thing as fat. There was no love handles and I didn't have to exercise. There was nothing to exercise to get off. There was nothing to put on. So you, the way you are, your mindset depends and how happy or sad you could be. Then I was living somewhere and paying rent. But when my money was running out, I had to get somewhere free. I got somewhere for free. And this free housing that I got was in a, what you would call a tenement yard. And in that tenement yard, everybody used the same shower. And there was a, um, um, like a bathroom on the outside. And one was the shower, one was the bathroom. So I had to have a keg in my room. So when I want to use it, I use the keg and then I go empty it in there. I was not used, <laughs> I was not used to that. My parents worked so hard for me, for, for me not to do those things. And I was saying to myself, oh my God, if my family ever saw me, they would say, no wonder, because they tell me that I'm worthless. I said, they would really, really say you're worthless for, for doing these things because of how I was living. So I had a little room and in that little room, I had a quarter bed, not a twin bed, a quarter bed. This was a little bit bigger than a cot. It was not a twin bed. When the rain fall, I have to literally open up the umbrella over me because the water was coming into the zinc roof on me in the bed. And no matter where I move it in the room, it, I was getting wet because I have to put the bucket now that I was using as a toilet there to catch the water and, and to turn it around. But I made myself happy there until I got a job. And when I got a job, I was able look, to look for an apartment and I was able to move now into better circumstances. But until my circumstances was better, I was doing that and I did not complain. I said, Jesus, suffer more. Paul and the apostles, they went through worse. Da, 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 da. I made myself happy in my current circumstances. Amen. And thank God I know how to to make wood fire and how to go out and get the um the pieces of wood the um the dry wood and 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 get the candle fat to start the fire 
because sometimes I did not have any stove until I got an apartment for myself. And then I was um, stretched out in luxury, but until I have luxury, that was how I was living. And I just adapt myself to my circumstances because if I didn't, I would be, I, I, I would be miserable and I would be quarreling and I would be complaining. And it was then, <laughs> and, 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 and it was then I begin to understand because when I wanted to go on the mission field, God told me not to work. And I remember Things Jamaica wanted me to be the manager for their office. They have one office in Montego Bay and one in Kingston. And they wanted me to manage those two offices. And I was to travel all over the world to buy things for them, to represent Jamaica as part of the tourist board. And the people came to Montego Bay on a Sunday, which is not like nobody do interview on a Sunday. And they said, this is not even protocol. But they said, according to your qualifications, we want you so badly to get this job that we're coming to Montego Bay on a Sunday to let you know this job is yours. You're going to manage your two office. You'll be traveling back and forth between Montego Bay and, and Kingston at their expense, traveling international at their expense. The job is yours. Meet with us on the Sunday, sign on the line. And God tell me not to go. The people came on the Sunday. I went to church and I came back. They called me. I tell them I cannot come on Sunday. I'm very busy. They said, okay, we'll meet you the Monday morning before we leave to go back to Kingston. I say, God, these people come all the way from Kingston. At least let me show them some respect and dignity by going and meeting with them and tell them I cannot take the job. And I remember I got dressed in my power, my power suit as an executive. So briefcase and all. And when I got to the gate, God said, turn back. If you ever put your foot through that gate, I turned back and I cry, I cry, I cry. I said, God, why don't you want me to work? But if I if I had left from that circumstances to drop into an OEA when it is six o'clock, everybody have to be inside the house because it's dark. It's just dark. And you take out the lamps and light the lamps. It would have been too much of a culture shock. But for the one year I did not work, for the one year I had to trust and depend on God to supply my need, the one year I just had to learn to do without a lot of things, it prepared me for when I was on the mission field, how to be happy. If you have that mindset, you can be happy anywhere. If, if you train your mind and develop your mind. You can be happy in any circumstances. You can say like Stanfield, whatever my lot, you have taught me to say it as well. Business are no business. Children are no children. Wealth are no wealth. Money are no money. Whatever my lot, you have taught me to say it as well. I can live anywhere. I can live under any circumstances. I left St. Vincent. When I left St. Vincent, I had the prime minister and the deputy and the leader of opposition. Their numbers were in my phone. I could pick up the phone and call them. I go out with them for lunch. I left there and I came to the U.S. I said, God, that's not upward mobility. That is several steps backwards into a different environment. You can make yourself comfortable and fit in wherever you are. Because my life is so strange and so, so different. People know a God who's so nice to them. But the way I am sometimes, that's the way God is with me. And I know God to be rough. God, God is rough. He is rough. Some things will happen to me that I will think is so bad, so egregious. And God will ask me. What is my problem and, and, and why am I sad? And, 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 I, and I'm afraid even to answer. I have to say, God, I'm not sad. I'm lying. I am sad. I'm not sad. Not everything is all right. Because God is, is, is like that. And the people who know God to be this nice, nice, nice kind of love with God. God bless you for you and your relationship with God. But I know that the path and my life, it is so strange and it is so different. I don't even understand it myself but I can be happy anywhere.
I can I, 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 I can be happy with the elites and I can be happy with the poor and the downtrodden because I have gone in the mountains with those Caribbeans and, and in some part of the mountains, the, the, the parts, uh, the pathway is like for goats and animals. I remember one time I was walking uh, uh, along a mountain path and the path was so narrow that if, when you make a little slip, you can go down into a ravine. And, and I'm there with my little slippers and I'm walking close to the edge so I don't fall in. And there goes my foot slide. I have to say, slippers, you go and I'll stay. But they use their barefoot so that you can use your barefoot to like hold on to the dirt. And I went there in my slippers because I wear slippers and I lost the slippers, but I didn't fall into the ravine. So I've learned how to do a lot of things. I plant peanuts, I reap peanuts. I have done a lot of things. So for anybody who see anybody have a little bit of an anointing, and a little bit of grace and a little bit of favor on their life. And you want to envy them, to be jealous of them and to be covetous and to say all manner of evil against them. And you have no clue. You have absolutely no clue what those persons have gone through to get what little they have from God. And you don't have anything because you don't want to go through anything because everything in your life must be honky dory and every day is Sunday. Every day is not Saturday. It's Sunday. A lot of days are like Wednesday. Why me, Lord? What have I ever done? It, 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 it is a trials and it is a difficulty. But in the midst of it all, the ability to see God in your circumstances and to be happy and to say whatever, whatever, my lot, you have taught me to say it is well with my soul. And I'm not going to let these things bother me. There's one brother that is in charge of our fasting service. And Brother Tessan say, if you're happy, praise God. And if you're sad, praise God. If you have money, praise God. If you don't have money, praise God. If everything going good, praise God. If everything going bad, praise God. No matter what it is, just praise God. Because worrying about it won't help. You might as well praise God. Talking about it won't help. You might as well praise God. Whatever your lot, it's the mindset that I'm going to praise God because I'm going to make myself happy regardless of what the circumstances are because my present circumstances are temporary. And I'm not going to make a permanent decision based on my temporary circumstances. So I'm going to um, align my mindset let the mind that was in Christ be also in me, which is why the Bible says that we must have the mind of Christ. Because Paul used to be with Gamaliel and Paul is accustomed to being in the, in, in the presence of rulers and leaders and have a certain kind of clout. But when he left that and when they turned against him, he went with the Gentiles and he says, in whatever state I am, I learned to be content. I know how to be a base and I know how to be a bound. I know how to be empty and I know how to be full. I know how to be empty. You can't tempt me with food. You cannot tempt me with food. Because when I was working in the hospitality industry, I had three full meals a day, access to it. And I never used to take advantage of it. And I used to be at all these international, sorry, conference with a glass of water in my wine glass and pretend that's wine. Because I don't want nobody to ask me, why am I not eating? Because I'm fasting. So with all this spread, with all this half moon spread, with all this intercontinental, with all this Wyndham Crow spread, with all these fancy hotel, five star, three star, four star spread. And I have a glass of water and just sipping as if it was champagne because I'm fasting and nobody need to know my business. You can tempt me with food because I'm looking at it and it can't do nothing because I learn how to be happy. You can be happy. Happiness is a mindset. 
And that is what Pastor Raphael was talking about. The next time we meet him, we may just be Dr. Raphael because he's working on his disserta dissertation on the mind, how to train your unruly mind. How you look at your marriage is a mindset. If, you're love, if you love your spouse, everything they do is so nice. It's so cute, it's so cute. But when you, when you have an occasion to find fault against them, they can buy you the biggest bunch of roses and come home with it. And you will find a bug in one. And that's all you talk about. You never see that this one did have a bug in it. Why you buy two dozen? Why you didn't buy a dozen? Two dozen too big for the vase. Well, if two dozen is too big for the vase, get another vase. And another person over there just praying and, and wishing they have a husband or a spouse that buy them flowers. They're just wishing they have a spouse who say, let's go out and eat. Every day you want to go. Every week you want to go here. When you have want an occasion against somebody, you're going to find it. And if it's not there, you're going to make it. And what they did to you 30 years ago, you're going to talk about it now as if it just happened. And that is so in the past. That was decades ago. Your mindset. Because you, you're looking for a reason to leave. So when your husband was cheating against you, when your spouse was running around and, and doing the club thing and, and, and doing the drinking thing and doing the smoking thing, but now they're safe and they stop all of that. Um, I remember when, when he used to drink and come in late at night, how long ago was that? 20 years. So why are you talking about it now? That was 20 years ago. Why are you still holding on to it? It's a state of mind. So we can train our mind to be happy. Happiness is a state of mind. Happiness is a state of mind. There are people that have billions of dollars, millions of dollars, and they are so unhappy. They have things, but they have no peace. They have food, but they have no appetite. They have stuff and they have no health. Sister Jennifer talked about it, that when she was in California, the woman have a chef, the chef made their breakfast, then she have a spiritual guide who come there to work or witchcraft or witch that comes to, to do the witchcraft thing in the house. And then they need somebody to go out with them bodyguard and then they have chauffeur and they have everything and they have no peace. They have no peace. Happiness is a state of mind. Because when you have, when, I, when we were growing up, we did not know that we were poor. Because everybody was more or less the same. So during the summer, you just eat as much fruit as you can. We never talk, think about weight. We were just eating fruits. And, and, and in June, the June plum come out. Then the cocoa plum come out. Then the eat your oat apple come out. And then the mangoes come out. And then the sour sop, the custard apple, nesberry. Whatever was there is what we ate. And everything was fine. You have your share with me. Guinea is out, you share with me. Tambourine is out, we tambourine. Jimbling out, we eat jimbling. Everybody was happy and we had so much fun going to the river and just trying to swim and jumping off the top of the bridge and doing all kind of foolishness. And we were very happy and did not know anything about we need to have um, an, a, a Pac-Man, a Walkman, a PlayStation 1, and in Nintendo 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and, and we, and she, and he, and all these gadgets. We never had these gadgets. We were out in the open, running around, sometimes with, 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 with raggedy underwear, raggedy clothes, and barefoot, and we were having fun. Why? We were happy until somebody tell us we were, we were very, very happy. We were happy. Nobody was overweight. No child was overweight. You, you were outside too much. You go outside and you play in the sun until it was evening and you went back inside your yard. And we were happy. It's a state of mind. Now people are working two, three jobs to give their children gadgets to make them happy. And all the children is saying, I just want to talk with mommy and daddy. I don't have any time to talk with you. I'm too busy working to buying the things that I think you need to make you happy and they would give everything to spend one hour with you. They don't care. Children are very happy with the simplest of things. 
the simplest of things. I remember once in Jamaica, I took out my Sunday school class to the beach and we were to have this fun day on the beach and it rained. And to me, it was a washout. It rained and we didn't get to play all the games we had to do. We didn't get to do this. We didn't get to do that. And I was looking at all the negatives, what I had planned and what actually happened. And the children talk about it was the best time ever. And I'm saying, what happened to them? Why it was the best time ever? Because I was there and to me, it was not the best time. But they were just being happy that the fact they were at the beach, it was raining and they couldn't get to go in the water that much. But they had the best time ever. Happiness is a state of mind. And last time we said to be happy first, you have to learn to love yourself. Love yourself. Accept yourself. Know yourself, be comfortable with yourself, take off the mask, look at yourself in the mirror naked, talk to yourself, say what you love about yourself, say what you don't like, do a SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats, and look at yourself naked when you're doing it, and write them down, and turn those weaknesses into strength, and the, and the threats into opportunities before they they destroy you, amen, and work on yourself, accept yourself, know yourself, self-awareness is a powerful thing, and then the other thing was, take off the mask and stop pretending, when you have to pretend and, 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 and to this crowd, you're this way. And to that crowd, you're that way. You can lose yourself to the point where you don't even know who you are because you wear so many masks that you lose yourself. You lose yourself behind so many different masks. And then the third thing I said was, invest in your family and friends. You're not gonna be sorry when you die that you didn't spend more time at work. You're going to be sorry that you did not spend enough time with your loved ones. Amen. If it's anything you learned from COVID, it's to appreciate people and to accept the mundane and the normal as a state of happiness. I did not know just going to church could be a privilege. It was something I did and it was taken for granted until COVID show up and recognize that going to church every Sunday and seeing the different people, it was a privilege. It was a privilege. Today we're going to talk about, now we're going to touch on be active both mentally and physically. Another way to be happy is to be active physically. Don't sit down. Even if you work at a sedin sedentary job, don't sit down all the time. I have a watch and this watch think it's smart. So every now and again, when I'm teaching, it says to me, time to stand up and stretch. You've been sitting down for an hour, it tells me, time to get up and stretch. But even when you're at a sedentary job, find ways to walk about. When I go to the mall, I go shopping. I'm parking my car as far away as possible from the entrance and I walk into the place. I'm not going to circle. You see people circling around and around. Why? They want a spot nearby the door. Uh -uh. I'm going all the way down to the back because it's exercise. When I buy gas, I'm not going to let the lever pump the gas for me. I'm holding it myself and pump the gas. Why? It's exercise for my wrist. Because when you get older, some people, their joint gets stiff. And when your joint gets stiff and you go to physical therapy, they're going to give you a ball and you have to squeeze that ball, squeeze that ball. Come on, 10 and do it again. Squeeze that ball, the left hand, squeeze that ball, put your hand around it and squeeze, squeeze. So I don't want the machine to get the exercise. I'll get the exercise. I'll hold it. Thank you very much. I'll hold it. So that my body can get the exercise. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So that is a form of exercise. Walk all the way to where you're going. Don't, don't be circling around and trying to get a near park at the door. 
get up in the morning. I never forgot when Michelle Obama said she get up at five o'clock every morning and exercise for one hour before she do anything for her family. She spent one hour exercising. Then she's going to go get them up and get breakfast together. But she have, she need that hour for herself. I'm up, but I'm going to pray. I'm not going to get up to do no exercise at that time in the morning. Amen. But make time for yourself. That's what she's saying. Get up and do something. Don't be, don't be so lazy. Don't find any excuse. Walk around your block before you go to school in the morning. Because when you walk, you feel so good about yourself. Because when you're walking, your body is getting exercise. And when your body is getting exercise mentally, it affects your state of mind. Because you could be walking and praying. You could be walking and thanking God. Oh, look at that beautiful flowers. Oh, look at that plant over there. Look at this. Look at that. And you're just inhaling and exhaling. Thank you, God, I can walk. Look at that man. He's using his walker and I'm walking by myself. Thank you, Jesus. Walk around the block. Look at that person with the dogs. Look how cute the dogs are. Look at that chihuahua. Just walk. Walk around your block. You don't have to go to the gym. Walk around your block and inhale and exhale. Relax your body. It does the body good when you, when you walk, do physical exercise. Get two dumbbells and exercise. So when you're home and you're watching TV, come on, pump the irons. Come on, pump the irons, pump the irons, pump the irons. Pump the irons. It took me years before I used my washing machine. And even now, I keep a little tub in my bathroom so I can wash some things. That's the exercise for my, my biceps. I have such skinny arms. Every time I wear something short and it's, oh, your yeah, hands so skinny. I'm washing my clothes, washing, washing, washing. And it used to be skinnier because I used to wash all the clothes by hand, because I love washing, I hate ironing. So I used to wash all the clothes by hand to, to and that was the exercise for my arms. So that because I don't want no jiggle, there must not be nothing here to jiggle. So that was the exercise for my arms. And then when it rained and I cannot wash, that's when I would use the washing machine or I would tell my family, come and use my washing machine because I wanted to get exercise and use because I would wash them by hands to get these skinny arms. And you should see my, my biceps and triceps, all right? But now I wash some and some, but I still have it there because I don't want to get those jiggles. I, I, I don't like to see it. Everybody has some craziness about them. That's part of my craziness. I like my arms to look skinny. I love it. But I have my dumbbells. So do your dumbbells and, and exercise. Come on, do the back one. Do your exercise. Do your exercise. If you're sitting and watching television, get the bicycle. That bicycle that you can exercise your feet. So while you're watching TV, come on, do the pedal. Pedal your legs. Pedal your legs and get some exercise. Confession, I cannot ride a bicycle. I keep falling off a bicycle. A month ago, I got a tricycle. <laughs> I have an adult tricycle. And you can laugh because I kept falling off the bicycle. And I bought a bicycle. And I was riding the bicycle at the back of my yard. But I was holding on to the fence because I keep falling off the bicycle. So I was practicing in the grass. And I was falling off in the grass. <laughs> I was falling off in the grass. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to put all shame aside and I'm going to get me a tricycle. So I got me a tricycle and who want to laugh? You should see me like an old person riding through my neighborhood. And then it have a bell on the left and the brakes on the right. So you should hear me ring, ring with the bell. Billing. <laughs> and I ride. So my legs is going. But, but I love gardening, so I'm always out in the garden. So sometimes the watch will tell me, congratulations, you have done 6,000 steps, 8,000 steps, because I'm out there, I'm weeding, I'm, I'm planting, I'm doing all kinds of things. So I'm out there, so I get my exercise. It's just that with this heat wave, I have to do a little bit in the morning and a little bit in the evening, but I keep 
active. And the speed at which I walk, if you see me walk, you would know I get my exercise in the day. All right. But in the evening, I still have to go down on my mat and do some abs. I have to do some abs, have to do some cardio, have to get some shanti in. And I need to get back my DVD because I have different kind of DVD exercise and I have the dancing exercise. And when I'm ready, I just put on and I'm going to say, I'm going to dance God. I'm going to worship God and I'm going to dance. I'm going to dance and praise God. And that's exercise. But exercise do you good because when you exercise, it relieves endorphins, it releases serotonin, it releases dopamine, it releases it release that other one that I cannot pronounce, nepiphenoprine or something like that. It releases all of those neurotransmitters. And when they release the neurotransmitters to your brain, those are the neurotransmitters that controls your mood. If you're happy or if you're sad, those regulate your moods. And when you exercise, you feel good about yourself. Do some exercise. Amen. Yes, get a tricycle. Come on. Get a tricycle. Push them aside. I have a tricycle. Get an adult tricycle. Walmart sell them. All right. Get a tricycle. I, I gave away the bicycle. I bought the bicycle and could not ride it. So I gave I, I gave it away and, and got myself a tricycle and you should see me. Now I'm getting better at it. And now I can do more. I know my legs now. That's good exercise for your legs. But do something. And if you don't want to do none of those um, exercises and you're married, have sex more often. <laughs> That's good exercise. You can lose 300 calories. You can lose up to 300 calories each time you have sex. So if you want to lose weight and keep fit, do some sex exercise. <laughs> it will make you just as happy. It will make your spouse happy and you will lose some weight, 300 calories. So if you eat that ice cream and you know the ice cream was 300 calories, go and take it off. <laughs> Just say to your spouse, I need a workout. <laughs> and do your workout and lose and take off back the weight. That's good for you. No, but seriously though, sex is good for you all around. It's good for you to prevent cancers. It's good for you to release the endomorphins in your body. It's good for you as an exercise. It's good for you as a painkiller. It's good for you all over as a mood regulator. It is just good for you. There is very little downside to having regular sex. There's a whole lot of upside. And if you're a female, there are 16 reasons why you should have sex more often. And if you're a male, it's 13. So there is more reason for women to have sex than men. More. And you're not more holy to pretend that you don't love sex. And if you don't love sex, something wrong with you, go to God and say, God, change me. Say, God, change me, God, and regulate my mind. You need to get your mind straight. And when you're not married, just say, help us, Jesus. <laughs> That's why you need to go exercise and work out all that energy in your body. Then go for a walk and lift those irons and pump those irons and, and, and exercise. But that's a good exercise, amen? That is a good exercise. So that's one of the ways to be happy is to do exercise. The time is almost finished. Where did the time go? I have 11 things and I don't reach the 11 things yet. Why you people always have me going out? I'm going to blame you. So physical exercise. You could go by the beach, walk, walk in the sand. And if you're going to walk in the sand, take off your shoes. I know some people here that cannot walk on the sand. OCD, they're not going to walk on the sand. But take off your shoes and walk on the sand and let the sand get on your foot. The sand is abrasive. It will be there filing down all those rough edges on your foot. But walk on the sand. It will do your world of good. Put your foot in that salt water and let the salt water splash against your foot. So if you go out to, to a restaurant to have, to have a meal, just tie up your clothes or something, walk in the water, then dry yourself off. It will do your world of good. Watch the ebb and flow. Watch the ebb and flow. Look out on the horizon. Try to figure out where the sky meet the sea. 
and it looked like the skies meet in the sea. Just make yourself happy. Go out in the rain and play in the rain. I used to love that as a child. And I had asthma, so I was not supposed to be out in the rain. But I would be disobedient and go and play in the rain because it was so nice to feel the water on your skin. And it was so nice until I get sick in the night. But I, I enjoy myself while I was in the water. Amen? Go and play in the rain. Visit a museum and look at the artwork and look at the creativity of human beings that God have given human beings all these creative ideas and all and all the drawings, whether you like classical drawing or neo or abstract or, or all these different kind of styles with pencil, with, with charcoal or with painting, with print. Go into a museum. Go to a nature park and, and look at the animals and, and look at the, and, and just, just have fun with yourself. Amen? Keep your life moving. Read a book. Take up a hobby. Get yourself a garden. Plant vegetables or flowers or vegetables and flowers. And if you say, well, where I live, I don't have a garden. Well, what you can do, get yourself a Tupperware bucket or a keg, and then you, 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 you don't have to fill it all the way with dirt. If you're smart, you know what you do. You get the coconut husk or other things and you put at the bottom or you put newspapers because newspaper or any kind of paper is biodegradable um, or get leaves and put the leaves at the bottom. Take up a lot of the space, then put the dirt and then plant your tomatoes and plant your this by the good soil, put in it. And, and if you live in an apartment, you can put them in a flower vase and make it look attractive like flowers and plant your tomatoes and, and plant your flowers and watch something grow. Watch something grow. You'll be surprised what that do to you to put your hands in the dirt. I like my hands in the dirt. Gardening isn't nice if you wear a glove. You're not getting the, your hands in the dirt. We come from the dirt and there's something good about put your hand in the dirt, but you have to clean it at the end of the day. And you may have to use a Q-tip with the soil because the soil is really hard. And then you have to go in between the nitty gritty and get the soil out. Amen. But get your hands in the dirt. Get your hands in the dirt and do something. Mentally, you have to keep your body exercised. Your brain is a muscle. Your brain, your brain, no, no, sorry, your heart is a muscle. Your brain is fatty tissue, fatty tissue. You have to exercise your brain. Amen? Because when you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So when you get older now, you have to do the exercise for your brain to keep your brain functioning properly. Read a book. I cannot stress that often enough. Read a book. Keep reading a book. Learn new things. I just got about two dozen books to read. I don't know how I'm going to do it because I have my, my dresser. My, my room is not a regular room because I have books pack up everywhere. And as I read a book and get it out of the way, then a next set of book come in. But read a book. Do the crossword puzzle. When you get to do the crossword puzzle real good, then you move on to the New York crossword puzzle. Those are challenging, but you can do it. If you practice long enough, you can just run through that New York um, crossword puzzle because it's usually a, a kind of difficult um, crossword puzzle. Play bingo. Play poker. If you're married, play strip poker. The children are not there. Lock up in the room with you and your husband. Play strip poker. All right? Play mahjong. Play canasta. Play card games. Crossword puzzle. Chinese, Chinese checkers. Play solitaire. Play final word. Play scrabble. Find something to exercise your brain. 
as you're walking, count forward one to 20, count backward 20 to one, because when you count backward, that's another part of your brain used to, to do backward. When you're walking, sometimes you're going forward, stop and start to walk backward a little bit. It's another part of your body and the muscles you're using to go backward, do forward and backward. Amen. Exercise your brain and keep your brain going because when your brain get rusty, it is difficult to use um, to use it. When you have not studied for a while, you're gonna find out when you go pick up a book, nothing is sticking. You read a page five times and nothing is sticking. You just finished reading the page and you forget completely what you've just read. That's because you were not you accustomed to using your brain. And the brain do have some muscles, so you have to get the muscles up and running. I've known people that are never going to retire. And the reason they're never going to retire because when people retire, you usually die quicker than those that uh, kept working. Because when you keep working, you go to work, you have a job to do, you have tasks, you have assignment, you have deadlines, you're meeting with people, you're talking to people, you're using parts of your brain and, and you're in a community or a fellowship. When you stay home, what do you do? You're going to eat, watch TV, eat, watch TV, talk to some people on the phone, eat, watch TV, go on social media. And a body in motion stays in motion. A body that is active is going to keep on being active. So it's easier to keep on being active once you're active. Amen. So when you get into that activity mode, it is easier to stay, keep it moving because when you are sedentary, it is harder to get up, which is why when you're working and you sit down and say, let me take a little rest, it's going to be the hardest thing for you to get up now and to go again. But if you keep it moving, it is easier. I like to work until I'm finished. And when I finish and sit down, that's it. It's going to catch up with you, but keep it moving. But don't allow your brain to get rusty. When you're using your phone, memorize certain phones. Memorize certain phone numbers. I remember one time I used to have a, a telephone directory in my head. You could call me and ask me the number for a, per, a, a company or a business, and I would give you the number. I would give you the fax number and I would give you the second number because I would keep it. I would keep it in my head. But when you have these phones that are smart, I don't want my phone to be a smartphone. I want to be a smart person using a regular phone, but I don't want the phone to be smarter than me. All right. So what you do, you practice the numbers. So I know I practice my siblings and certain people number by heart. So instead of saying phone, find, put in the name, no, I dial the number because I want to keep that part of my brain active. Someone told me one time that they lost their phone and all they knew was one number out of the to call and they could not get any help because no, nope, that person wasn't answering. And I laugh and I laugh and I laugh. And one day I locked my phone in the car and guess what? Only one person number I could remember when I borrowed somebody's phone. Nothing because I was doing fine, fine. And I said, that this will never happen to me again. So I dialed the number even though I know it and it's easier to say fine. I am dialing the number by heart because I want that part of my brain to keep active and to keep working. So exercise your brain. Do something exciting. Do something different. Don't cook the chicken the one way all the time. Pick, get a hobby. Learn how to bake. If you, if you can bake, learn how to decorate and do ice thing. Or learn crochet. Take up knitting. Take up knitting. Take up art and craft. Take up something. Do something, volunteer somewhere, do something um, that will bring you joy. Volunteer at the hospital, volunteer at a soup kitchen, volunteer at a shelter, volunteer at a food bank, volunteer at your child's school. Volunteer, do something to occupy your time. It will make you a very interesting person. 
So that when person say, oh, you know, I'm this, or you can say, oh, yes, and I was da 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 da. It, it shouldn't be that we're so dull and we're so boring that people even don't want to see us. You're going to come and talk about, hey, Monica, how you doing? Oh, you know what? I'm not doing so bad today. You know, yesterday my arthritis was up and I was taking my pills and I called my doctor and, and he said he's going to change my medication. And with my high blood pressure, my high blood pressure was good for a couple of days. Who want to hear that? Seriously, who want to hear that? I've met seniors who will not live in a senior community because they are afraid of meeting people like that. Because when I meet people and all they can talk about is their sickness and their doctor appointment because they have nothing else going for them in life. That is a sad state of being. When that's all you can talk about is your medication and your doctor appointment. We should be well-rounded people. Amen. Don't allow your brain to get rusty. Do mental activities. Do mental, lift some heavy weights with your mind. The Bible said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what Pastor Raphael was encouraging is that when you think a thought, write it down and begin to see how often do I think that thought? What happened that triggers that thought? Why am I thinking that thought? What is my response to that thought? And keep a journal. And when you begin to see your thought pattern, then you can devise a plan how you're going to change. But you can literally be happy anywhere. Because if you're a miserable person, it's a state of mind. And no matter what you get, you're going to be complaining. Because if you have a three-bedroom house and, and you have a five-bedroom house, you're going to complain. Then who you expect to clean this five-bedroom house? Look how the house is big. But you always wanted a five-bedroom, five-bathroom. Until you have to realize that this place needs to clean. And you thought that if I had two cars, I was going to be happy. That didn't make you happy. If you're not happy with yourself... And if you're not happy with your life, nothing going to make you happy. Winning the lotto will not make you ha happy. There was a young girl um, used to work at Walmart and she had three children for different men. And she won $188 million. And within three years, all that money was gone. She was not accustomed to money and she blew that money. She spent $21 million to defend a boyfriend from a drug charge. And the reason why they, the lawyers charge her that amount of money because they know she didn't have no use for the money. It don't cost $21 million to defend anybody. Not even those millionaires and billionaires paid that amount of money to get them off any charge. But this is a black girl who had no concept of money. And in a year, in, in a three, four years, she was back to go back to Walmart, didn't know what to do with the money. So the 188 million did not make her happy. So if you're, if you're here thinking that if I get more money, you're going to be happy. Money have wings. The Bible says money have wings. And if you do not know how to manage $100, you're not going to know how to manage $10,000. You're not going to know how to manage um, $100,000, you're definitely not, not going to know how to manage a, a million dollars and you're going to be right where you are. You, you, you're going to be right where you are being miserable. I wish I had some money to buy food. She went from working at Walmart to $188 million and right back to being poor because she never understand how to handle money. So if the money did not make her happy, happiness is a state of mind. I have seen people that are sick and they're going through the worst kind of sickness and you call them to encourage them and you call them to cheer them up and you call them to pray for them. And when they finish, testify about the goodness of God. 
And when they finish talking to you, you leave their presence so happy. You leave their presence feeling so fulfilled. You leave your presence feeling so blessed. And you call them to encourage them and they encourage you. Why? They look at their situation differently. They look at their situation differently. The doctor was taking care of his patient and she had cancer three or four times. And, and he, she did the test and, and he said, um, Miss May, I have some sad news to tell you. The cancer has returned. And she took the doctor and said, doctor, he did it before. He can do it again. And he was so encouraged. That was her attitude. That was her mindset. It's in the mind that we're happy. Your mind determines how you react to certain events. Amen. If, you're, if you cannot find your car keys, you can be miserable or you can be fussing. You can be fussing or you can be happy. It's up to you. You can be searching that bag. You can be searching all over the house. You can go in the garbage bin. You can go in the freezer. You're looking all the unlikely places, looking for your car keys. Or you can say, there's an accident down the road and God is delivering me from it. So let me just chill and relax. When the accident has passed, God is going to show me the key. You know, when you, find your, when you find the key, it was exactly at the first place you look, which was in your pocketbook, right where you put it. And he covered it. You couldn't see it. It was in the place at home where you keep it and God cover it. You couldn't see it. But when the accident passed, when the danger passed, you saw it. Now you can go on the road because God is and was protecting you. You can be happy or you can be sad. When your car is in an accident or need repairs and you have to take it in to get it fixed for a couple of days, you can be sad and miserable or you can take the time to appreciate how good it is to be able to take a key, go into a machine and turn it on, boom, and it, and it, and, and it answers you and ready to go. Because you take that for granted. But the day when you turn it on and nothing happened, you realize how blessed you were for every time you turn it on and bam, you were ready to go because you took it for granted. So you can learn to thank God in every situation. When you're up, you're up. And when you have some downtime, you can be grateful to God that now you can relax a little bit. I wasn't planning on this layoff. I wasn't planning for this um, downsizing and anything. But now that is that happened, let me spend a few weeks fixing up my home, spending with my family. I'm going to look for a job, but not yet. You know what? I'm going to stay off a week before I go on the, 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 the computer and start putting out some application because I want to spend some quality time with my family. And then I'm going to go and search for something. We, it's our mind. It's our mind. You can see the glass as half full or you can see the glass as half empty. How do you see the glass? Are you looking to say God is working on me or are you comparing yourself to another person? If you have a septic tank, and that septic tank is leaking. The grass around the area of the septic tank is going to be the greenest grass, the most lush and plush grass, because it is being fed by sewage. You are over your fence looking at your neighbor's grass, not knowing that is sewage water in it. Water your own grass. Take care of your own lawn. Stop looking at what other people have and don't drive yourself crazy. Because that person could be stealing from their employer. That person could be sleeping with the boss to get what they have. That person could be a scammer to do what they do. And they're there, how comes they have this? How comes they have that? And why don't I have this? And why don't I have that? It's a, it's a state of mind. It's a frame of mind. I have observed because the last couple of weeks I've been doing this for somebody. That when people died. 
you will live your life and you will accumulate these things. And they are precious to you. Nobody must sit on your couch because it's white. Nobody must use their favorite china because they're expensive. And they definitely can't use your water for crystal. And they can't use this and they can't use their that. But when you die, your children don't want what you have. What you think, what is precious to you is precious to you. So when you die, get rid of it. Get rid of it. I was getting rid of some stuff. And, and, this, and the good thing is that when you don't want something, other people are there welcome and happy to get what you have. So I went to get some things to give to this charity that I'm associated with. And I was saying to the person, keep this from your mother because this looked like very nice. And they said, uh-uh, we don't want that. We don't want it. Get, it. get rid of it. And it ended up taking me longer time than I planned because they were literally getting rid of everything. Why? It was precious to the mother, not precious to us. So when you think you have to work all your life like a dog, putting up things for the children, they don't want it. They don't appreciate it. Your bone china, they want some contemporary thing. They are very happy going to the dollar store and buying the dollar store stuff. And you want to leave them bone china and serving platter. They're going to look at it. Oh, those um, rose flowers, they look old fashioned and old and I don't want anything old. They want contempt, contemporary stuff. And you think you have to work all your life to lay up these things for them and they have no interest in your stuff. And they definitely don't want your clothes. They don't want your clothes. They don't want your shoes. There is very little that you have that they want. They want the money, leave them the money, but there is very little apart from the money that they want. So you don't have to have this mindset that you're gonna work and you're laying up this for your children and, and, and this wedding dress that I get married in, that's your wedding dress that you get married in. You better sell it, give it away or do something with it. They don't want your marriage dress because that's old fashioned. You have the, the button come all the way up to here and the sleeve here and nothing showing. They want the mermaid style, body fitting and with all up here showing out and no sleeve at all. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to think you have to do all of that to leave something for them that they don't want and definitely will not appreciate. Happiness is a state of mind. How to be happy? First and foremost, be happy with yourself. Because if you're not happy with yourself, you're not gonna be happy anywhere. If you're not happy in the pit, you're not going to be happy in Potiphar's house. If you're not happy in Potiphar's house, you're not going to be happy in the jail. And if you're not happy in the jail, you're not going to be happy in the palace because Joseph was in all those places and his behavior never changed. He was still the same Joseph until Pharaoh. God says, I'm going to make you as a father to Pharaoh. And Joseph was the same person where he was, did not change who he is. Never change him. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with me today. Hope you all have learned something. And what you learn to put in practice. Hold on, somebody, somebody was saying, write some things about how to be happy. Let me, they had a list here. That was very good. Let me go if I can find the list. And remember, if, if you're older, don't be ashamed to get a bicycle. Happiness is to know our Savior, living a life within his favor. Happiness is the Lord. Yes, that was a Sunday school son. Happiness is to know your Savior. Yeah, living a life within his favor. Happiness is the Lord. And when you have the Lord Jesus Christ, that should make you happy all yes. day long. Amen. So God bless you. See you on Monday. Elder Edwards will be in on Monday. We're going to have, we have a good lineup for next week. And if, if I have the time, I'll try finish. I'm just at number four. 
and I have 11 to go. Amen. God bless you all. Enjoy your week and invite someone. Share the, share the recording with someone else. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. God bless you. Keep on praying. God bless you. See you on the line and enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you all. God bless you. Have a good week. Have a good weekend. Yes, ma'am.